The gradient theorem, also known as the fundamental theorem of calculus for line integrals, says that a line integral through a gradient field can be evaluated by evaluating the original scalar field at the endpoints of the curve. Let then it is a generalization of the fundamental theorem of calculus to any curve in a plane or space rather than just the real line. The gradient theorem implies that line integrals through gradient fields are path independent. In physics this theorem is one of the ways of defining conservative force. By placing phi as potential, phi is a conservative field. Work done by conservative forces does not depend on the path followed by the object, but only the endpoints, as the above equation shows. The gradient theorem also has an interesting converse. Any path-independent vector field can be expressed as the gradient of a scalar field. Just like the gradient theorem itself, this converse has many striking consequences and applications in both pure and applied mathematics. Proof. If phi is a differentiable function from some open subset u to r, and if r is a differentiable function from some closed interval a, b, to u, then by the multivariate chain rule, the composite function phi r is differentiable on and for all t in. Here the denotes the usual inner product. Now suppose the domain u of phi contains the differentiable curve gamma with endpoints p and q. If r parametrizes gamma for t in a, b, then the above shows that where the definition of the line integral is used in the first equality, and the fundamental theorem of calculus is used in the third equality. Examples Example 1 Suppose gamma r2 is the circular arc oriented counterclockwise from 2. Using the definition of a line integral, notice all of the painstaking computations involved in directly calculating the integral. Instead, since the function f equals xy is differentiable on all of R2, we can simply use the gradient theorem to say. Notice that either way gives the same answer, but using the latter method, most of the work is already done in the proof of the gradient theorem. Example 2 For a more abstract example, suppose gamma Rn has endpoints P, Q, with orientation from P to Q. For U in Rn, let U denote the Euclidean norm of U. If alpha 1 is a real number, then here the final equality follows by the gradient theorem. Since the function f equals x, alpha plus 1 is differentiable on Rn if alpha 1. If alpha less than 1 of then this equality will still hold in most cases, but caution must be taken if gamma passes through or encloses the origin. Because the integrand vector field x alpha minus 1 x will fail to be defined there. However, the case alpha equals minus 1 is somewhat different. In this case, the integrand becomes x minus 2 x equals so that the final equality becomes log q minus log p. Note that if n equals 1, then this example is simply a slight variant of the familiar power rule from single variable calculus. Example 3 Suppose there are n point charges arranged in three-dimensional space and the ith point charge has charge chi and is located at position pi in R3. We would like to calculate the work done on a particle of charge Q as it travels from a point A to a point B in R3. Using Coulomb's law, we can easily determine that the force on the particle at position R will be here. U denotes the Euclidean norm of the vector U in R3, and K equals 1, where epsilon 0 is the vacuum permittivity. Let gamma R3 minus P1, Pn, be an arbitrary differentiable curve from A to B. Then the work done on the particle is now for each I. Direct computation shows that thus, continuing from above and using the gradient theorem, we are finished. However, we have not yet defined potential or potential energy. Thus, we have solved this problem using only Coulomb's law, the definition of work, and the gradient theorem. Converse of the gradient theorem. 
The gradient theorem states that if the vector field f is the gradient of some scalar-valued function, then f is a path-independent vector field. This theorem has a powerful converse, namely, if f is a path-independent vector field, then f is the gradient of some scalar-valued function. It is straightforward to show that a vector field is path-independent if and only if the integral of the vector field over every closed loop in its domain is zero. Thus the converse can alternatively be stated as follows. If the integral of f over every closed loop in the domain of f is zero, then f is the gradient of some scalar-valued function. Example of the converse principle To illustrate the power of this converse principle, we cite an example that has significant physical consequences. In classical electromagnetism, the electric force is a path-independent force, i.e., the work done on a particle that has returned to its original position within an electric field is zero. Therefore the above theorem implies that the electric force field Fe, SR3 is conservative. Following the ideas of the above proof, we can set some reference pointer in S and define a function U. SR by using the above proof, we know U is well defined and differentiable, and Fe equals minus U. This function U is often referred to as the electrostatic potential energy of the system of charges in S. In many cases, the domain S is assumed to be unbounded and the reference point A is taken to be infinity, which can be made rigorous using limiting techniques. This function U is an indispensable tool used in the analysis of many physical systems. Generalizations Many of the critical theorems of vector calculus generalize elegantly to statements about the integration of differential forms on manifolds. In the language of differential forms and exterior derivatives, the gradient theorem states that for any zero form phi defined on some differentiable curve gamma Rn. Notice the striking similarity between this statement and the generalized version of Stokes' theorem, which says that the integral of any compactly supported differential form omega over the boundary of some orientable manifold omega is equal to the integral of its exterior derivative d omega over the whole of omega, i.e., this powerful statement is a generalization of the gradient theorem from one forms defined on one-dimensional manifolds to differential forms defined on manifolds of arbitrary dimension. The converse statement of the gradient theorem also has a powerful generalization in terms of differential forms on manifolds. In particular, suppose omega is a form defined on a contractible domain, and the integral of omega over any closed manifold is zero. Then there exists a form psi such that omega equals d psi. Thus, on a contractible domain, every closed form is exact. This result is summarized by the Poincaré lemma.